else, you know, something that came up with Kathleen and that I really want to make sure I bring up here and see your opinion, but it's interviewing is a two-way process, right? And networking is a two-way process. So you are also providing evidence of yourself, but you're also collecting evidence to make sure it's a fit for you. What are your thoughts about that? I completely agree with that because really for you know, an employer-employee relationship to be successful long-term, it does have to be a fit on both sides. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, people can discount, you know, is this going to be a good fit for me? Because especially when you're just coming out of school, you're looking to get, you know, into your profession. So you may not have the luxury of being able to kind of pick and choose, is this the exact best fit? Or you may not have as many options as you do further on in your career. But I think you should absolutely, you know, vet the employer as much as they're vetting you. Um, yeah. You have to look at it that, you know, you're going to be whatever organization hires you, you're going to be, you know, an asset to them. And so it is, you know, you're the next generation um, who's, you know, coming along in a very tight labor market. So as much as, you know, sometimes you think it's, I just need to press the company to get my first job. They should be trying to impress you too. Um, Two-way and- match right? <laughs> a two-way match. It's a, it's a play on the three-way match for uh, all the auditors out there. I'm sorry. I got to slip in like the audit jokes along the way. Um, no, that's, that's really, really nice to kind of triangulate that information because it, it feels like this weird power dynamic where it's the job holders and the job seekers, but it really is that values match that investment because in your twenties, um, I really do feel like you're spending your greatest investment should be how do I spend my time? How do I set myself up? How do I gather as much skills and have as many allies to help me help as many people down the line and in the future and build a career that, you know, I don't feel, I don't feel like it's work, right? There's not like a work Sam and a fun Sam or, you know, like, it's just, it's, you have to do cool shit with cool people, right? Like that's, and that's exciting. And if you learn lots of tools along the way and like develop your skill set, then you can choose on how to employ that later on and finding those people who, who do want you to succeed. So maybe it's a little wishy-washy, but you're more powerful than you think. It's very true. Um, and yeah, especially, you know, the further you advance into your career, you know, if you get your designation, then, you know, very quickly, the power shifts primarily into, you know, the job seekers favor. Uh, Cause once you, you know, you hit a certain level of experience and, you know, your credentials, uh, you become a very, very marketable um, commodity, we'll say. So very quickly, very quickly, the dynamic does actually shift in the job seeker's favor. And then it actually, I find, becomes more of a question of managing your career versus, you know, often it's the initial, how do I get my first job? How do I get my designation? But the greater long-term challenge by far, I think, is how do you manage your career? And, you know, when you come to forks in the roads, trying to, you know, make the best decision each time. Oh, that is a whole nother podcast. Yeah, that's another one. <laughs> but, but to that point, I was uh, out for coffee with a friend and um, like universities are fabulous. I love my position. I love where I'm at. Uh, so, and it's not a, but it's an, and, um, and you're responsible to the greater public. So your expenses and what gets authorized is under a different lens than a for-profit company. So when I'm out uh, for coffee with like one of my friends, she's in a new role and it's in a different city with very expensive parking. And I was like, oh, we talked about commuting or something. And she's like, oh yeah, like I I have parking. And I was like, oh, sweet. Like, you know, that's great. And she just like stopped and looked and was like, if I didn't, I wouldn't take this job. (laughs) Like I'm at a point in my career. (laughs) And she went on, I was like, well, of course. Like, meanwhile, I just dropped like $1,600 to park (laughs) beside building and I'm okay with that like it's a trade-off and you really have to figure out what your value fit and what the whole package is for you but I love that I love that she's like you know because that's that world that's that for-profit entity and that's a you know a signal in a part of like the respect package and that's part of the norms and culture that you know executives get fancy (laughs) fancy (laughs) underground parking as a part of their perk and I'm like cool like I I'm done with that so yeah very interesting when you talk about how quickly it shifts to that, <laughs> that like values role, management of career, as well as all the fun stuff that comes with it. You know, what's better than being at a dinner where somebody else picks up the tab? Being that person to pick up the tab and expense it back to the company, right? Definitely. <laughs> Absolutely the best part. And, you know, it does, it's, 
you know, anyone listening to this, you do get to that point in your career. And I yeah. think, you know, in the accounting profession, probably sooner than a lot of other professions. Absolutely. It's part and, of that investment. It's part of that ROI from that investment. Kimi, 